Once upon a time, there was a beautiful young girl who lived with her cruel stepmother and two ugly stepsisters. From morning to night, they shouted to her to wait upon them. The sisters hated her because she was so beautiful and they were so ugly. They dressed her in rags and forced her to sweep and scrub and do all the heavy work in the house. Cinderella! Cinderella! The stepsisters had beautiful rooms of their own. But Cinderella had to sleep in the kitchen, huddled near the fireplace to keep warm. And because she awoke every morning covered with soot and cinders, they called her Cinderella. Wake up, Cinderella! But one day, great news came to the house. Majesty announces a grand ball at the royal palace. Every maiden in the kingdom is invited. The prince will choose the most beautiful maiden at the ball to be his bride. As soon as they heard this, the stepsisters began preparing for the ball. They called in tailors and jewelers and dressmakers and hairdressers and all went busily to work. Old clothes, new clothes, stitch, stitch, so it goes. Stitch, stitch, is it clothes that can make a lady fair? As they worked and sang, Cinderella had to hurry about and help all of them. But of course, she wanted to go to the ball too. And at last, she gathered up courage to ask. You go to the ball, laughed the stepsisters. You, Cinderella, at the ball? Stitch, stitch, so it goes. Dress in satin, comb your hair. Will it make a lady fair? <laughs> no! Think of her dancing there in her rags, said the older stepsister. I'm the one the prince will choose, said the younger stepsister. When they see me dancing at the ball, they will stop and stare, and the prince will call. The prince will ask me for my hand as the fairest one of all. Oh, I know you're sweet, and I know you're fair, but remember, sister, that I'll be there. He'll turn from you when he sees me, and I, the queen, will be. And now the sisters quite forgot Cinderella as they continued quarreling with each other. He'll choose me! He'll choose me! So it went on day after day until the very last minute. I'll be queen! I'll be queen! Stop it, shrieked the stepmother. Here, the coach is at the door. She hurried the two stepsisters out and they rode away to the ball. Cinderella sat all alone in the garden, crying sadly as she thought of the ball. At last, she fell asleep. As she slept, she heard fairy voices. Cinderella opened her eyes. Before her stood a sweet-faced old woman with a golden wand. Cinderella, she whispered, Cinderella, I am your fairy godmother. Do I have a fairy godmother? asked Cinderella. Indeed, yes, said the fairy, but no questions now. We must hurry. <laughs> She waved her wand, and instantly a host of fairies appeared. Quick, 
cried the fairy godmother. We must make Cinderella ready for the ball. First, a coach fit for a princess. Here, this yellow pumpkin will do. She waved her wand and the pumpkin became a coach of glittering gold. And now the horses. She waved her wand again and four mice scampering by became four milk-white steeds. And now a coachman and a footman. She touched the cat and dog with her wand and there they stood. But her dress, cried the fairies. She can't go in these rags, and she needs slippers in which to dance. How shall we dress a maiden so fair? Let the stars of midnight shine in her hair. Let us of moonbeams weave her a gown, and a spin in As the fairies sang, the fairy godmother touched Cinderella with the golden wand. Her rags became a gown of starlight and moonbeams. On Cinderella's feet gleamed two slippers of fairy glass. But remember, cried the fairy godmother, remember my magic lasts only until midnight. Before the clock strikes twelve, you must leave the ball, or the coach will change to a pumpkin again, the horses to four field mice, the coachman and footman to a dog and a cat, and you will be in rags again. And now, off with you to the ball. Cinderella arrived at the palace, the ball had already begun. All turned to Cinderella when she came in, so beautiful was she. The prince had been sitting alone, but when he saw Cinderella, he stepped down from his throne to ask her to dance. Away they whirled as though they would dance on forever. While the music is playing, you'll waltz with me And you'll still hear me say, now I found you I will make you forever my queen Forever as a dream goes on But at midnight the spell will be broken on they danced to the music. All wondered who the beautiful princess might be. And as the hours went by, Cinderella forgot the warning of her fairy godmother until suddenly the clock began to strike. Magic spell was over. She would be in rags again. 
Cinderella turned and ran down the length of the palace hall, through the door and down the palace stairs. As she fled, she dropped one of her glass slippers. At the foot of the stairs, no golden coach was waiting. Only a yellow pumpkin and a dog and a cat and four field mice scampering away. Of all her fairy godmother's magic, only one slipper remained. There stood Cinderella in rags again with the slipper of glass in her hand. The next morning, the prince sent out messengers to find the beautiful princess with whom he had danced. The messengers visited all the cobblers in the land to see if anyone had ever made a glass slipper like the one Cinderella had left behind at the ball. Oh, cobblers, tell me, have you ever made a shoe for a very pretty lass? Tap, 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 oh, what a question! question. Tap, 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 oh, what, what a question. question! Oh, cobblers, tell me, have you ever made a slipper like this of fairy glass? Tap, 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 oh, what, what a question! I make shoes of leather. I make shoes of paper. I make shoes of wood. But not of glass. We never have. With all our skill, we never will. Tap, 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 tap. When the prince's messengers found no cobbler who could make such a slipper, the prince set out himself. There's still one way to find her, he cried. Somewhere in the land is the maiden whose foot this slipper will fit. From house to house he went, until at last he came to the stepmother's house. The older sister tried on the glass slipper. It didn't fit. Then the younger sister tried on the slipper. It didn't fit her either. It must fit someone here, cried the stepmother. Try it on me. They pushed and squeezed. It didn't fit. Push harder, she cried. It didn't fit. Harder, harder, she cried. And the glass slipper broke in a hundred pieces. Cinderella, she shrieked. Come here, sweep this up. Cinderella hurried in to sweep up the broken glass. As she kneeled down, the slipper she had saved from the ball fell from her pocket and lay shining on the carpet before the prince. It's the other glass slipper, cried the prince. Here, you try it on. You must be the princess I danced with at the ball. Cinderella tried on the slipper. It fit her foot perfectly. I have found you at last, cried the prince. I choose you for my queen. And so the prince found Cinderella again. In the royal coach, she rode back with him to the palace. There they were married, and as king and queen, they lived happily ever after. Thank you.